Hey folks, a while ago now, I put out a video profiling one of my favorite Sonic the Hedgehog characters, Mecha Sonic. Well, technically the video profiled a whole series of robots, each one an improved iteration on the last, but this big blue guy from Sonic and Knuckles is and always has been the definitive Mecha Sonic, really. Last year, I was incredibly excited to see that Mecha Sonic had re-emerged and literally risen from the grave featuring heavily in a four-part comic book miniseries, which concluded this year. The series is called Scrapnik Island, and it's by the good folks over at IDW, who, for those that don't know, have been doing a great job for the past five years with their Sonic the Hedgehog comic book, which is something of a spiritual successor to the old Archie comic. Being a Mechasonic stan, and someone who's a huge fan of the IDW comics, I felt I needed to share the wonderful story of Mechasonic on Scrapnik Island in its entirety. So obviously ahead are spoilers for all of the Scrapnik Island miniseries. The great thing about sharing this story with you all is I also get to talk about a very specific topic related to Mechasonic, a topic that I left out of my previous Mechasonic video and that a lot of people said should have been included in that one, but more on that later. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's dive in to Scrapnik Island, issue number one. Issue one starts with Sonic and Tails flying through an incredibly intense storm. They fly over an island and find the broken, smashed remains of the old Death Egg. A bolt of lightning strikes the biplane and the duo crash land on the mysterious island below. Sonic suddenly wakes up in a lonely, dark room. He's been separated from Tails and seems to be surrounded by wall-to-wall -wall smashed badniks. When Sonic gets up, he finds that he has a heavy, rusty brace on his left foot. The story has a cool little horror vibe as Sonic explores the black, isolated corridors of the island complex. As he wanders, he's silently stalked by shadowy badniks and watched from afar by a mysterious robotic figure. In one room, Sonic finds an out-of-place flower, which contrasts with the dark surroundings, and in another large hangar, he finds the dilapidated ruins of the egg carrier from Sonic Adventure. Suddenly, Sonic gets frightened by a loud screech behind him. The torch reveals it's a rather odd-looking badnik, half coconuts and half caterpillar, with the same creepy vibe as Sid's toys from Toy Story. This badnik isn't alone. Sonic suddenly finds himself surrounded by spooky hybrid badniks. Sonic slowly backs away and then it happens. He bumps into a orange, rusted, berobed Mecha Sonic. He's back, baby. I don't know why, but robots often look really cool in robes and cloaks. I don't know what it is. Anyway, Mecha's presence is enough to scare Sonic good and proper. Sonic desperately tries to get away, but the cumbersome ankle brace proves to be incredibly pesky. We get a few alternate shots of Mecha here that shows that he too is an amalgamation of different parts. I think he has the arm of a crab meat and the saw blade leg from a Mecha boot. Sonic tries to hide in an old capsule and the horror vibes continue. Mecha hunts him down, but Sonic uses an impromptu skateboard to get away, only to bump into another large robot who is strangely accompanied by Tails. Tails calmly explains that these robots are friendly. They dragged Sonic and Tails inside after they'd crashed in the storm and helped install the brace on Sonic's injured ankle. Tails explains that they are, in fact, Scrapniks, and the largest of the bunch introduces himself as E-117 Sigma, one in a line of robots that also included E-102 Gamma. It looks like Mecha is a kind of second-in-command or heavy for Sigma. Sigma explains that it was the island's own broken climate disruptor that caused their plane to crash, and then takes them outside. Tails promptly freaks out in excitement, but it's obvious that Sonic is a little more skeptical about things, and about Mecha in particular. Issue 1 ends rather ominously, with Mecha having some kind of electrical freakout, which doesn't bode well for the future. Issue 2 opens with a flashback, showing Sigma washing up on the shores of the island and proceeding to fix up a bunch of broken badniks. Sigma is directed by Hey Ho, who is the axe-wielding miniboss of Sonic & Knuckles' Mushroom Hill Zone. 
to the remains of Mechasonic. We snap back to the present and find that Tails has finished working on a translator module that allows the Scrapniks to speak. As Sigma and Tails discuss the ingenuity of Tails' new gizmo, Mecha has another electrical freakout. I'll mention here that Sigma's dialogue is written to be intentionally quirky and, I think, explicitly British. He uses a number of British colloquialisms. I'm more than happy to claim him as one of the Sonic franchise's only British characters. Welcome aboard. Sigma informs Sonic and Tails that in order to fix their crashed plane, they're going to have to head into the remains of the Death Egg and retrieve a specific part. Sonic and Tails do a classic Scooby-Doo move and split up. Tails remains behind to start fixing the plane, and Sonic heads to the Death Egg with Sigma and Mecha. The trio take a quick detour back to the flower I mentioned earlier. Sigma explained that it washed ashore one day and has been looked after ever since by Mecha. He goes on to say that the Scrapniks desire to leave the island one day, but feel trapped there by a sense of shame that they're nothing more than discarded puppets of Dr. Eggman's. Sigma is working on fixing up the egg carrier, which they'll use as a means of escape. When admiring the egg carrier, another shadowy figure is revealed to be following them. Sonic and Mecha split up from Sigma to continue the search for the biplane part. Sonic gets all gooey and extends a hand to Mecha, apologizing for their earlier fight, obviously won over by this new tender side that Mecha has seemed to embrace. Their handshake is interrupted by the shadowy figure I just mentioned. It's none other than Mecha Knuckles, the robotic variant of Knuckles, whose only in-game appearance remains Sonic Advance, where he appears as the boss of Angel Island Zone. Note that he's wearing Knuckles' iconic hat from the Sonic anime movie, which is a wonderful touch. Who doesn't love hat-wearing Knuckles? Sigma arrives on the scene again and explains that Mecha Knuckles was programmed by him to protect the egg carrier, but something goes terribly wrong. Mecha Knuckles goes ballistic, and he slugs Sigma and engages in an awesome, hard-hitting battle with Mecha Sonic. In a really cool scene, Mecha Knuckles smashes Mecha Sonic so hard that painful memories of his construction and his ass-whooping at the hands of Knuckles at the end of Sonic and Knuckles come flooding back. It looks as if Mecha Knuckles wins the fight, but suddenly Mecha Sonic pulls an Undertaker maneuver and sits up. Mecha Sonic violently demolishes Mecha Knuckles with a spin dash, but the reminder of those painful memories left a mental scar, because after dispatching Mecha Knucks, issue two ends with Mecha Sonic turning his attention to destroying Sonic next. Issue 3 opens with Sonic strapped to a table with Mecha seemingly ready to conduct some Dr. Frankenstein-esque experiments on him. We get another flashback starting with Mecha's system rebooting, a point of view shot revealing Sigma is the first thing he saw upon his reboot. In this flashback it certainly looks like Mecha experienced a new more peaceful lease on life alongside the island Scrapniks. Back to the present, one rogue Scrapnik spots the helpless Sonic and reports his findings back to Tails, who gears up alongside a group of egg robos ready to bust Sonic out. We're treated to some really cool stealth scenes illuminated by a green glow as Tails and his troop of egg robos slink through the corridors of the island's complexes looking for Sonic. Tails bumps into Sigma, who's able to offer an explanation as to what might be going on with Mecha. According to Sigma, his efforts at rewriting Eggman's original programming appear to have failed, and Mecha has reverted to his original protocol, destroying Sonic the Hedgehog. I love some of the kinetic action scenes in this miniseries, as illustrated by Jack Lawrence and coloured by Natalie Fordrain, including this tense encounter, where a confident Mecha reveals himself to Tails' cohort and escapes from their gunfire completely unscathed. Mecha is able to eliminate Tails' egg robos one by one, until he comes face to face with Tails himself. Mecha gives his supervillain monologue to Tails. We don't find out what he plans to do with Sonic, but we do find out that Mecha feels completely stung at being abandoned by his creator, Dr. Eggman, after the events of Sonic and Knuckles. It's an interesting look at a forgotten character's psyche. With his plan laid bare for Tails, 
Mecha proceeds to give him a beat down too, finishing him off by stealing his gizmo and stuffing him into a trash chute. Back in the room where he has Sonic hostage, it looks like Mecha is going to use Tails' gizmo to swap his mind into Sonic's body. The start of issue 4 reveals that my hunch was right. In this final issue of Scrapnik Island, Mecha outlines his plan to Sonic. Using the helmet on Sonic's head, once a gadget created by Eggman to control badniks with his mind, and with Tails' iPad-style device, Mecha plans to swap his consciousness into Sonic's body. And because Sonic is able to run so fast he can run across water, Mecha's going to use Sonic's body to escape the island, having lost faith in Sigma's plan to escape using the egg carrier. In a pretty sad moment, Sonic asks Mecha if that means he's going to ditch his Scrapnik friends, in the same way that Eggman previously ditched him. Solemnly, Mecha proclaims that friendship is a weakness, and a mere glitch in his programming. Unfortunately for him, a group of Scrapniks are lurking in the rafters and saddened by Mecha's words, launch an attack on him just as he starts the Mind Swap protocol. The Scrapnik attack causes the Mind Swap machine to go kaput, which enrages a volatile Mecha who screams, I'll crush you! Okay, here we go. This line is incredibly significant. When I originally covered Mecha Sonic, I found a lot of viewers disappointed that I didn't talk about a certain subject, a certain legendary series of Flash animations that feature Mecha Sonic as the primary villain. I'm talking, of course, about Super Mario Bros. Z, a series that started life on Newgrounds in 2006. Super Mario Bros. Z was an ambitious Flash sprite animation made by Alvin Earthworm. The series took characters from Sonic the Hedgehog and Super Mario and put them in a storyline with some serious Dragon Ball overtures. The series managed to capture a lot of imaginations back in the day, thanks to its compelling storyline and, in particular, its phenomenal fight choreography. Technically, the series' primary villain was an original character called Turbo Mecha Sonic, a hybrid robot, the result of Metal Sonic fusing with a collection of other failed robotic Sonic clones. Turbo Mecha is a serious and uncompromising villain, rebelling against Dr. Eggman, annihilating many of Sonic's friends, and engaging in a hunt for the Chaos Emeralds himself in the Mushroom Kingdom. I adore Mecha Sonic because he's in my favorite game of all time and his design is awesome, but I think a lot of people gained a lot of love for the guy because of his role and portrayal in Super Mario Bros. Z. If you've never seen it, then the entire original series is on YouTube in 4K. I highly recommend it. In Episode 6 of Super Mario Bros. Z, Turbo Mecha utilizes the power of four Chaos Emeralds to achieve a semi-super state, and then promises, I'll crush you, to the Power Rangers-inspired Axum Rangers. The fact that this line snuck into the comic really illustrates just how popular and influential Super Mario Bros. Z's portrayal of Mecha Sonic is. Furthermore, to see a beloved piece of Sonic fan animation referenced by an official Sonic comic is pretty cool, actually. It really goes to show that the writers at IDW have a deep love for the Sonic fandom and have their fingers on the pulse of what Sonic fans love. Now, after that brief interlude, let's carry on with the story. Because the mind swap process had already started, Sonic does have some of Mecha's lingering thoughts bouncing around his head. With Mecha's insecurities running through his head, Sonic battles his Mecha counterpart one more time, smashing him with a brutal kick onto a scrap heap that descends into a fiery inferno. Sonic encourages Mecha to grab his hand, but Mecha is reluctant. Mulling on his abandonment and now his failure to defeat Sonic again, Mecha has resigned himself to his fate. It feels like this whole miniseries took a lot of inspiration from Toy Story because this scene can't help but remind me a lot of Toy Story 3's tearjerker ending, if you know what I mean. In a touching moment, Mecha does take Sonic's hand, and just in the nick of time, Tails arrives with Sigma and the Scrapniks to pull the two Sonics to safety. In an even more touching moment, the Scrapniks offer Mecha a warm embrace, causing Sonic to shed a little tear, triggered because he's still able to feel Mecha's own emotions. That tear was Mecha's. 
The story ends with Tails fixing up Mechasonic and Mecha Knuckles and completely eradicating any lingering Eggman programming inside of them. Now, Mechasonic is happy to let Sonic and Tails leave on the tornado and vows to dedicate himself to his future, represented by this wonderfully preserved plant, and leave his painful past behind. I wanted to put out this video for two reasons. One is that I'm a huge fan of Mechasonic and felt compelled to share this update about one of my favorites, especially considering I believe the IDW comic books are now considered canon and in line with the video games. So I guess this is canonically Mechasonic's fate. But the second big reason is that this miniseries captured my love of the IDW comic books perfectly. Now, of course, I'm a big Fleetway guy and Sonic the Comic remains my favorite Sonic comic book, but IDW have been doing an amazing job with Sonic. In every issue, the art is always fantastic, and I think the writing is on point, finding a great balance between humor, action, and intrigue. Scrapnik Island is written by Daniel Barnes. It encapsulates everything great about IDW. The story is paced really well, with lots of very different scenes getting a chance to breathe. You have heady, adrenaline-fueled action, a couple of moments of gentle exposition, and then slower, more tense moments that border on being horror. This video is my extended elevator pitch, imploring you to go out and pick up some IDW Sonic comics if you haven't already. I'm lucky enough to live close to a comic book shop that stocks them, and Scrapnik Island is only really the tip of the iceberg. There's so many more good story arcs and miniseries to enjoy in IDW's growing back catalog. With that, I'm very nearly done. I genuinely want to hear everyone's thoughts on the IDW comics. I have seen some criticisms of the comic leaning too heavily into meta references and Sonic's character being a bit lackluster. I don't necessarily agree, but I'd love to hear people's opinions, so do share them below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.